Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Any more speakers on motion number one? Seeing none, we're going to move on to motion number two in the name of the PSEU. I'm causing, calling for a proposal of that motion. Nearly fell. Uh, Tom Garrity, PSEU, uh, proposal motion number two. Just uh, before I do that, on a point of fact, section 3.2 of the Lansdowne Road Agreement does not commit unions to either division of so-called reform or indeed to any specific policy on reform. It merely commits the trade unions to engage uh, with the government. Uh, sorry to burst somebody's rhetorical bubble. Um, <laughs> colleagues, you can't take over 28 billion uh, euro uh, out of an economy without there being consequences. You can't reduce an economy by about one-fifth without there being fairly dramatic consequences, and we've witnessed those since 2009. We've witnessed a situation where, uh, even as we are coming out of the recession, uh, it's estimated that 25% of the work workforce are either unemployed or underemployed. We've witnessed, uh, again, another lost generation to emigration. We've seen a rise in poverty, and we've seen a decimation of public services. And all of those are, of course, beyond unfortunate. But the real tragedy is that, as a society, we appear to be intent to rush headlong back into the policies that brought us there in the first place. How often do we hear in public discourse references to the tax burden, as if tax is simply a cost, as opposed uh, to the means by which we fund the vital public services. And what's particularly tragic is that there is a viable and proven alternative uh, to a low tax economy. Right across Northern Europe, they have tried a completely different model. And not only is it socially fairer, economically it works considerably better. Uh, the most successful economies in the world are not low tax uh, economies. They're economies that, that tax uh, on, on a reasonably high level and fund public services. And they don't just create a, a socially fair society, they create a very successful economy. And that option is available to us as we are coming out of our recession. And now is our opportunity to begin that process, and it begins with wage-led growth. If you look at page 22 of the Executive Council's report, you will see uh, there a, a, um, a diagram that shows uh, the extent in the fall in wages since 2009. So there's eminent scope uh, at this point uh, in our economic cycle for us to get back to a situation where we can have pay increases that are significantly greater than inflation uh, and that can match the rate of economic growth. Fairly conservative estimates uh, are projecting that over the next few years, barring uh, an unforeseen external catastrophe, uh, our growth rates should average between 3 and 4 percent uh, consistently over the next few years. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever why that money can't be put back into the economy in the form of uh, wage growth that, that matches that level of economic growth and perhaps in some cases even surpasses it. And we should, should as a movement set ourselves as a, a target to take the quarter of a million people who earn less than the, the 11.45 living wage, 11.45 per hour living wage to take them out of that cycle of endless poverty. And we should do so not by giving employers tax breaks or indeed by simply supplementing inadequate wages through tax cuts. We should do so by uh, engaging in a campaign to ensure that we have wage-led growth in our economy. And if you look at the, the uh, drop in wages that has occurred since 2009, it is possible to do that without interfering with international price competitiveness. The other effect of increasing uh, wages in that fashion will be to increase the revenues that are available for our underfunded, uh, inadequately resourced public services. And if we want to build a, a society that is not just fair, but is successful, that is something that needs to be done. So the next a politician that knocks on your door and promising you tax cuts, send them running. Because it's far too easy 
to, to promise people uh, tax cuts as if there are no consequences. And we've lived through the consequences of that failed economic model since 2009. And we now have an opportunity to do something completely different, to do something that is mainstream across Northern Europe. Uh, and that's to avoid uh, the temptation to view tax simply as, as a cost and to see it as an opportunity to assist in the growth of our economy. And we can do that if we dedicate ourselves to the task of wage-led growth. Colleagues, I commend the motion to you. Thank you, Tom. Is there a seconder for motion number two? Anyone? Form a seconder? Yeah? Great. Okay, any speakers on motion number two? No.